brings life to deep ravines and lonely forests. Home and hunting ground for birds, fish and mammals. With them, we dive into a world of many rare creatures, all living in the wildest parts of Germany. Almost all rivers begin as streams, regardless of whether they have a source or are fed by meltwater from the mountains. In the region known as Saxonian Switzerland, streams provide good hunting grounds for otters. Where larger animals eat, there are often leftovers for smaller ones. The robin learnt this trick from his mum. In frosty periods, otters can spend days at a time in their subterranean dens. The animals don't hibernate and need to go hunting regularly. Nearby, white-throated dippers are also gathering provisions. They dig up caddisfly larvae from the riverbed and shake them out of their protective casings. When an otter leaves its den to go hunting, it cleans its fur very thoroughly. The male dipper is up in arms. An interloper has dared to invade its territory, and that means war. Or at least a fight. The cock is defending both its hunting grounds and its mate and drives the rival away. Where the water flows fast enough, it doesn't freeze and only calms down when it reaches a lake where it forms a thick layer of ice. Weaker animals suffer the most in the harsh conditions of winter. This wild boar is sick. Its chances of survival aren't good. but it's not prepared to give up easily. Respect for such willpower. This female frog and her bow are on the run. Hot pursuit across the ice. The pair are trying to reach open water before the rival catches up. The male riding piggyback wants to be the only one to fertilize the eggs when his partner spawns. It turns out that our hero won't be quite so alone with his conquest after all. The female's offspring will have several fathers. The male, in turn, has the chance to fertilize the spawn of more than one female, thus guaranteeing genetic variety. Hooper swans from Siberia and Scandinavia like to spend the winter in Germany. There are now more than 20 pairs that come here to breed. The reasons seem to be their rising numbers and the increase in rapeseed cultivation.
In the states of Brandenburg and Mecklenburg-Western Pomerania, the snow lasts until February. As soon as it gets a little warmer, however, bird calls signal the end of winter. Cranes fly in from the south. Around 150,000 of the birds use Germany as a stopover on the flight north to their breeding grounds in Scandinavia. The farmers delay ploughing in the fields until the birds that, according to legend, bring luck, have passed through. These areas are in turn strewn with feed by biologists to stop the birds eating fresh seeds sown elsewhere. It's the mating season. With their dance, the males drive off rivals and try and impress the females. Among the few enemies cranes, or at least young cranes, have are raptors like the white-tailed eagle. Its very presence ensures a degree of nervousness. During the thaw, the roe deer's resting places are often under water. Here, flight costs valuable energy that they need to survive. Every jump uses up far more strength than on land. It takes a while to reach the safety of the bank. The deer has to summon up all its strength one more time. Then, at last, it's made it. The eagle is on its way home. Its eyrie is three meters high, weighs a good ton, and can only be supported by strong trees like oak or beech. The nest gets bigger from year to year. The pair have been working on it for a decade. Once their home is furnished, the eagles get into the mating spirit. A hundred years ago, these birds were almost extinct. Now there are about 500 breeding pairs in Germany again. The great bustards are a bigger cause for concern. Weighing in at 20 kilos, these relatives of the crane are among the heaviest birds able to fly on Earth. Not exactly easy prey for a fox. There are only about 120 of the birds left in Germany. During the mating ritual, the male presents its white feathers and inflates its throat sac, 
which acts as a kind of resonance chamber for its deep voice. It's by no means certain whether the species will survive in Germany. A protection program has at least managed to double the population. When, in among the bustards, two hares start their courtship ritual, then spring can't be far off. For many years, it was assumed that when hares boxed, it was two bucks competing for the favors of a doe. In fact, it's foreplay between a buck and a doe. Hares are loners and don't usually let others near them. Boxing helps them get rid of this fear of contact. Getting familiar can take hours. Mating, on the other hand, is a matter of seconds. Buck and doe mate up to 20 times in a single day. The northeast of Germany has many traces of the last ice age. Glaciers ground hollows into the earth that later filled with water. A paradise for white-tailed eagles. Around Easter, after a good five weeks brooding, the eagle's offspring arrive. From now on, the parents will be doing a lot more hunting. Eaglets can't eat by themselves and have to be fed several times a day. The parents take it in turn. The next delivery is already waiting. White-tailed eagles usually stay together all their lives and can live for more than 30 years. Warmer temperatures bring out snowdrops, crocuses, and wood anemones. A few cranes have stayed on in northern Germany and will breed here. While one looks for food, the other guards the nest. These shy birds brood in wet alder woods. The nest on the ground is only safe from enemies, like for example foxes, if the water level is high enough. Once the eggs are laid, the partners will take it in turn to brood for about a month.
Germany's rivers and lakes cover a surface area of around 8,500 square kilometers. That's just 2.5% of the whole country. A relatively small habitat for a large number of species. One particularly colorful bird builds its nest on embankments. The kingfisher. The male is catching fish for its young. Six hungry chicks are waiting. The siblings know that each will be fed in turn. A titbit this big is obviously no easy matter. The parent seems to want to make sure that its offspring can deal with it. After each visit to the nesting hole, the bird cleans its plumage. Every day, unimaginable quantities of water flow through Germany's rivers and streams. The water of the river Danube alone would be enough to fill Lake Constance within a year. Water flowing into narrow valleys offers perfect living conditions for fire salamanders. Once, humans thought that because the amphibians crawl out of the fire of freshly cut brushwood, they actually lived in the flames. Salamanders love earthworms and with the right nutrition, they can live for more than 20 years. The amphibians thrive in wet surroundings, but only need a body of water to spawn in. Finding the right trees is much more important as they live in the undergrowth of deciduous forests. There are more than 800 rivers in Germany longer than 10 kilometers that transport their vital contents into all corners of the country. Otters also benefit from the abundance of water. These water martins are loners. The females will only tolerate males in their vicinity when they want to mate. The animals have no fixed mating season. Two to three months after conception, the females give birth. Young otters first have to learn to swim. Ultimately, they will, like their parents, be able to stay underwater for up to eight minutes at a time. The first warm spring nights bring out the toads. The woods are full of males wanting to mate, each looking for a female and prepared to put body and soul into the exercise. The female salamanders are also out and about. After mating around a year ago, they're now looking to give birth to their young in water. 
The biggest obstacle are the sex-crazed toads. They grab anything that moves, regardless of whether there's a chance of procreation. A few meters away, a female salamander is having better luck. Its lower body is already in the water, and it's about to give birth. A rarely filmed event. Salamanders don't spawn, they bear living young, whose egg membranes burst at the moment of birth. The larvae have bunches of gills on their heads to allow them to breathe in water without surfacing. The female leaves the stream, having brought six young into the world. Over the next few nights, it'll give birth to a further 70 larvae. In the Black Forest, rain often turns small streams into waterfalls. The rocky ground can't absorb the water. The torrents collect in narrow ravines. This is the home of the spotted nutcracker. Besides insects, nutcrackers love to feed on Swiss stone pine nuts. The crystal clear stream offers ideal conditions for an underwater hunter. The white-throated dippers have new offspring and are tirelessly bringing food to their nest in the embankment. These birds specialize in hunting on sight. They take precise aim before they go for the kill. They catch insects that no other songbird is interested in. In the far northeast of Germany, the countryside is often left to its own devices. Beavers have made their home in the former tributaries of the River Havel. Besides humans, these large rodents are the only mammals that create their habitats themselves. If the water level is too low, they build a dam to control it better. Beavers fell trees to get at fresh food. In the lodge, as a beaver's home is called, the female has had a litter, and the family is gathering food. The young of previous years help to transport the branches home. In the middle of the 19th century, beavers were almost extinct. Their fur was very popular, and Christians counted them amongst the fish they were allowed to eat during fasting periods. The beavers lodge. Here, four generations live together under one roof. Beavers have two to three offspring a year.
The young stay with their parents for about three years. Along with their siblings from the previous two years, the different generations form an extended family. When the young do eventually leave, they'll stay close by. Usually they build a new lodge a few meters away from the family home. In the Havel Valley, there's enough room for everyone. Further east, too, new offspring are being celebrated in the Alder Woods. The cranes are watching over their only chick. At this age, they are still the target of many enemies. Foxes, raccoons, crows and wild boars. The parents coax their young with gentle growling noises. But, like so many children, this chick has its own way of doing things. Not for long, however, the little crane soon loses heart. But the parents aren't far away, and the chick is soon back in safety. Three hundred kilometers to the west, on a tributary of the river Visa, a kingfisher is brooding. It's caught a perch and wants to use it to coax its last chick out of the nest. One more time, the father bird crawls into the hole. But the chick obstinately refuses to leave. Outside, the mother bird is calling. Its chirping sends the message that there's good stuff to eat out here. This has the desired effect. For the first time in its life, the chick takes to the air, thanks to the calls of its mother. Its parents will supply it with fish for another few days, then it will have to fend for itself. One of Germany's biggest rivers rises in the Czech Republic, the Elbe. It crosses the border into Saxony and Switzerland. The river is fed by many mountain streams, which over thousands of years have made their way through the sandstone. About a month ago, the white-throated dipper began to brood in this ravine. In the meantime, the chicks have left the nest. It'll be another two weeks until they're completely independent. The parent birds are still feeding them. Young dippers can swim and dive long before they can fly. For now, they're still enjoying full board and lodging at home.
To be able to see as well underwater as above it, dippers adjust their eyes and can see five times better than humans or other songbirds. Salamander larvae are prey for the birds. Together they compete for amphipods and caddisfly larvae. It's rare that a victim has the chance to defend itself. After three months, the young salamanders lose their gills. From now on, they breathe mainly via their skin and live on land. Summer has arrived, and in the fields, a group of young hares are waiting for their mother to return. She doesn't turn up until after nightfall. During the day, it would be too dangerous for the young hares to leave their hiding place. Hares don't make nests or dens, but press themselves into shallow hollows called forms. How mother and young find each other in the dark is still a matter of speculation. The mother only visits her offspring once a night. Her milk is so nutritious that one minute suckling lasts a young hare the whole day. This mother has five young to take care of, which is unusual. Such a large group of suckling babies have never been filmed before. A few minutes later, the meeting is over. The young hares split up and each returns to its hiding place. This increases the chances of not all of them being discovered by enemies. In the East German Oder Valley, the hunters of the night are circling. A downed moth attracts the attention of a Dorbenton's bat. Fifteen different kinds of bat hunt in this region. Early in the morning, black terns go fishing. Around 150 pairs live on the Oda. These rare birds brood on water lily leaves and artificial nesting aids put out by humans. A good 200 kilometers to the west, in the state of Brandenburg, a beaver is checking his territory on the Havel River. The ponds and lakes here are home to an animal that was once thought extinct in Germany. At the beginning of the 21st century, it was rediscovered, the pond turtle. Because turtles were also allowed to be eaten during fasting periods, they were almost wiped out.
Grass snakes share the same habitat as pond turtles and go hunting in the water. But if a turtle shows up, the snake will choose to withdraw. Pond turtles can be very aggressive and have a ferocious bite. They feed on snails, slugs, crabs and dead fish. There are only 70 specimens in the wild in Germany and all of them live in Brandenburg. The grass snake is out hunting and has discovered a frog. This time, the frog was faster. But the snake doesn't give up. It smells with its tongue and follows its prey's trail of scent. The region is full of hundreds of lakes and ponds. It's hard for the turtles to find one with a member of the same species living in it. So it's very rare to witness a spectacle in Brandenburg that one would otherwise see on a Caribbean beach. The hatching of the pond turtles. About four months ago, a female laid her eggs here, and now the offspring are making their way to the surface. As soon as the little ones have fought their way free, they head straight for the water. No easy journey. Whereas sea turtles lay hundreds of eggs, their pond cousins only manage about 15. If foxes or crows discover the babies, a whole year's brood can be gone in one go. Today they're in luck and reach the safety of the former tributary of the River Havel without difficulty. While pond turtles suffered at the hands of humans, other organisms benefited from their influence. Thanks to agriculture, cornflowers and poppies have been able to spread all over the world. Humans transported them with their seeds wherever they went. On hot summer days, a lot of water evaporates. If it rises to join colder air, then cumulus clouds form and thunderstorms follow. Now the water that spent so many days flowing down river to the sea is returning. On average, about 800 litres of rain a year falls on every square metre of German soil.
Wet greenery tastes especially fresh. This dandelion meadow is a paradise for hares, which love this plant more than any other. In heavy rainfall, the authorities open overflow basins along the Oder to relieve the pressure on the dikes. After the water has run off, there may be the odd fish or two left over. A feast for the white-tailed eagles. Conglomerations of this size would have been very rare a few years ago. It's not just fish the birds love, but carrion too. Last century, these eagles were threatened with extinction. Today, they're under strict protection, and many chemicals that would poison their chicks are now banned. A chick with a grey beak. In time, it will turn yellow. At this age, the fights are harmless the young eagles are still tolerant of younger relatives. As adult birds, they will defend their territory against rivals without compromise. These two still have a lot to learn before they're in a position to conquer their own territory. From the order, with its Ice Age heritage, it's back to the Harvel. The youngest beaver has finally left the lodge. Full of curiosity, it accompanies its mother on a foraging expedition. Beavers are the second largest rodents on Earth. In contrast to many relatives, they're not that interested in seeds, but prefer branches and leaves. A beaver has to consume 200 meters of fresh twigs a day. And with a kid tugging at your apron strings, that's not so easy. But the offspring learn fast. Summer is coming to an end. The young cranes are already commuting with their parents between feeding and sleeping places. It's now so cold that the insects have to warm up in the morning sun before they can move. The dragonflies take a while to reach working temperature.
Grey herons and black storks are catching their breakfast. The harvested fields now offer the hares zero cover. At least they have plenty of room for mating rituals. But at this time of the year, they can't seem to really get in the mood. The neighbors, on the other hand, a red deer stag sniffs the air. As the alpha animal, it's checking if any hinds are willing to mate. Time and again, rivals push their way into the mating arena. The old stag's message is short and to the point. Be off with you. The roaring of the stags rings out over the fields until late into the night. Autumn in the Havelland. Tens of thousands of cranes rest here on their way south. For a few weeks they regenerate. Then, one morning, it's time. The cranes set out for their winter quarters in France, Spain and North Africa. Hard on their heels follows winter. The harvel remains free of ice, which is why many birds choose to spend the cold season here. The eagles are spoilt for choice. The coots only stand a chance if they stick close together. That way the eagles can't concentrate on just one bird. The strategy seems to be working. But then, for one coot, it's curtains. Another way of getting through the winter is by keeping still. Life becomes a balancing act between saving energy and looking for food. Buck and doe are now more interested in each other's forms than anything else. What's cold for one is warm for the other. Whooper swans come from Siberia to spend the winter in North Germany. After temperatures of minus 40 degrees Celsius in Russia, here it's pleasantly mild. The beavers spend the winter resting rather than hibernating.
they regularly have to look for food in the neighborhood. Luckily, they don't depend on fresh greens. Bark is enough to survive the cold season. A hard life in Germany's lakes and rivers. But in just a few months, spring will once again free the animals from the rigors of winter.